What's good everyone? It's MJ with 23 Dan. Today I want to share a pickup with the Air Jordan 1 shattered backboard. You see a lot of reviews already up on YouTube, but I wanted to give a complete breakdown in history of why this colorway and this theme sneaker was released. So let's get into it. So as everyone already has seen, there's a video on YouTube that shows Mike playing in a Nike exhibition game and of him shattering the backboard. Mike played several exhibition games for Nike as well as other games in the league. In particular, this game was played on August 25, 1985 in which Michael Jordan scored 30 points. Now the videos that you see online and on YouTube, that was actually an original broadcast but it was also rebroadcasted and recorded by an, another individual in 1986 through Spanish TV. What many don't know is that Mike actually switched teams at halftime. So you'll see him playing basketball in the black and orange Stenafo Triste team and the other team is Juve Caserta in a white jersey. The game was played in Triste, Italy. So Triste is a city located in northeastern Italy. Juve Caserta is a city of Caserta in southern Italy. Stenafo Triste was established in 1974. It's basically like the D-League of the Italian League. Their current name is called Pallacanestro Triste. And I'm sorry for any Italians out there, my Italian is not good. But Stenafo had a multitude of names and stayed afloat through sponsorship. The Stenafo Triste name stayed from 1984 to 1994. As for all of these exhibition games themselves through Nike, Mike played in Italy, Spain, Germany, and Brixton, England. These are all Nike tours that Mike did in the summer of 1985 and throughout his other career. There's also a few pictures that are floating around the net, particularly by an individual by the name of Maiten Abelera. Uh, he first posted in 2008 with this photo, and currently I'm trying to get a hold of him. Uh, I found him through Facebook, messaged him, and he happens to live in Northern California and very, very close to where I live. So hopefully I can get in touch with him and we can go over some of the knowledge that he knows about Mike's exhibition game with the shattered backboard and all that good stuff. All right, so let's get into the shoes. So a lot of people have said that the Air Jordan 1 is very good quality, which I agree. Upon examining it further, when you touch the orange part of the leather and the white part of the leather, the orange part feels just like a broken in leather basketball. It doesn't have any like acrylic finish or anything like that. It just looks all natural. So let me bring this up to the camera here so you can see. And the shoe is just very soft itself. So if you wear the shoes, you hardly need any break in time with the leathers here. It's also that type of leather that when you purchase a new car and you have leather seats that you hope that you don't have buttons on the back of your jeans to scratch the leather. That's how soft it is. So just looking at the 360 around the shoe. It also came with an extra pair of white laces, white flat laces, nothing on the aglets. And for anyone else that has purchased the shoe, you'll also notice that some areas you have in the holes um, unpunched leather. So it's just one other thing that Nike forgot to remove, but it's okay. So in comparing the shoe with another set, I have the band one right here. And to tell you guys the truth, it does not feel the same. The leathers on the Band 1 is pretty much the cream of the crop when it comes to the Air Jordan 1. And I can tell you right now that the leather on the Shattered Backboard 1 is a lot more softer than it is on the Band 1. Here's the leather on the toe. Uh, one thing you guys want to note about the band one is that the reason why it 
went to the outlets and in my opinion is the date on the inside. It says 10-18-1985 that this shoe was banned. We all know that the, the black and red and the white and red Air Jordan 1 was created in March of 1985. So if this was ever created, it should have been in 1984 when Mike started his career in the 84-85 season. So now that we have the band one and the shattered backboard one, let's take a look at the OGs. So right here you have the 1985 white and red Air Jordan 1. Again, let's examine the 360 of the shoe and then get it up close with the leather. Here's the leather on the toe. Also is soft, but due to age it's a bit firm. But it's all raw materials. Finally, we have the 1985 Air Jordan 1 black and red colorway. Here's a 360 of the shoe. and the leather on the toe. Again, soft leather, but over time, the leather has stiffened up. So with the original colors of the Air Jordan 1 in the 1985 black and red and the 1985 white and red, you always had to break these in because of the materials. Whereas with the Shattered Backboard 1 and the Band 1, those are good right out of the box. So, the Air Jordan 1 Shattered Backboard. Why did it get its name? In the game that Mike played in 1985, Mike went up for a dunk and shattered the backboard. So as you can see, we have the rim as well as the net and the glass representing the shattered backboard. You also have that represented on the other shoe. For a close-up of the inside tag, this is what I get, guys. January 14, 2015 to March 16, 2015. If you're looking for a comparison between a fake Jordan and an authentic, hit up fake underscore education on Instagram, and it'll show you all the points that you need to see in determining whether you have a fake. For example, an important piece in the Air Jordan 1 in recent retros, you have the line that comes up past the Nike swoosh. That should be present. As well as the wings logo, all the wings should be bunched up together and not separated. For many of the retros, the back heel area should come up slightly straight and come to a slant at the top. If you compare that to the OG, you'll see that the heel comes up straight and continues on straight. For the band one, you also have that straight back heel, but you'll also notice it's not the true high, it's the mid cut. Here it is in comparison to the OG. As with the toe, you'll see that the three points here, as well as the top three, you'll want to note that the top three are parallel with these guys down here. Also, it didn't have this widow's peak. So if you have an Air Jordan 1 in this colorway with a widow's peak, it's fake. Also note with the Nike Air tag up top, that it's even. You don't have any bunching with the air going underneath the seam as well as the numbers coming down pushing that Nike Air down below. You want to make sure that everything is nice and straight. So one other thing that I did want to note is that the shoe released on June 27, 
2015 at a price tag of 160 bucks. I picked up the shoe on June 29, 2015 for $425. While that does seem steep now, the prices have steadily decreased, even as low as $350 on a resale. I went with the 425 because nobody around me was really selling locally and I wanted everything complete with the receipt in hand. So as you can see, I do have the receipt. This was picked up at the Chic Shoes flagship store on Market Street in San Francisco. And I did try for the raffle over there but was unsuccessful. I ended up finding somebody up in Sacramento who won their raffle and was reselling the shoes. I decided to pull the trigger because I wasn't sure how limited the shoe was. However, I'm glad I did because the shoes are beautiful. But anyways, that's my story. I'm glad I have them. Yeah, I should have probably waited until they went down a little bit more, but I needed to grab them while I could. If you're wondering how the Shattered Backboard 1s did in comparison to the Yeezy 350 Boost, I highly recommend you guys head over to camplist.com and they'll break down the entire scenario for you. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you did, hit that thumbs up button so that it can be shared all throughout social media. And follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope at mjoe23dan. Take care, guys.